Good day, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to our virtual product launch event. My name is Ajoy Krishnamurti. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Sin7. Today, we are joined by many of our current customers, many from our future customers that are evaluating Sin7 as a platform for their inventory and order management needs, and many from our partner ecosystem. I'm excited to talk to you all today, but I thought I'll kick it off with a quick level set, an introduction to who we are at Sin7. Sin7 is a global company, uh, but we have offices in seven countries and employees around the world. We have two main products, Sin7 Omni and Sin7 Core, serving over 8,500 customers across the globe. Our customers are product sellers, that are e-commerce online retailers, uh, that are retailers with physical stores, leveraging our point of sale system and application. We have customers that are B2B and wholesale businesses, as well as companies that are manufacturers, whether uh, those customers doing a basic kit assembly, disassembly, or full-on manufacturing for made to stock and made to order. Our customers are from over 75 countries, and in the last year, I've done over $35 billion in GMV. We get a lot of feedback from our customers. And you see some of the feedback popping up on the screen right now. Customer feedback really shapes who we are as a company and the products that we deliver in the market. But the feedback is also about customer engagement and customer support. These are two very, very important areas for Sin7, and we have prioritized investment to continue to improve our service to you all. Hopefully you have seen progress with these investments in the recent past, and hopefully you'll continue to see more progress and improvements across the product area, as well as our customer engagement. Product selling is a complex business. You all know that. There are so many moving parts. It's not just about tracking the inventory from the time it comes into the warehouse or a 3PL all the way that it gets shipped to the a customer. There are lots of stuff happening in between, but also outside. The promise at Sin7 is that we provide a platform that does that quite well, but also seamlessly integrate with many solutions that you depend on every single day, whether it's marketplaces like Amazon, Shopify, eBay, Walmart, WooCommerce, or uh, accounting systems, accounting system of your choice, whether it's QuickBooks or Zero, and syncing the records seamlessly into those accounting applications so you can maintain the book and track the book on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis. So our new vision statement to reflect on this challenge that our product sellers are uh, uh, facing is that to make selling products as easy as buying them. I talked about the uh, product selling is a complex business. How do we simplify that? How do we enable uh, different business processes and make them super efficient? So you as a product seller can with click of a button, understand what's your business look like on that particular day? What's the most profitable inventory? When do we need to, or when do you need to replenish? Uh, how do you manage uh, overstock or stockouts? Um, how do you connect with your accounting system so you can have a full understanding of how much money is going in, how much money is going out? Not only having that data, but also having that in a very, very actionable fashion. That's where we see the world moving. E-commerce as a uh, landscape or commerce in general have gone through a shift in the last decade. That shift has been from analog commerce to digital commerce. Customers switching from paper-based, uh, you know, um, uh, pads, notepads, and whatnot, and uh, Google Sheets and Excel spreadsheet to walking into the warehouse with a notepad, doing inventory cycle count. Uh, many of you probably uh, have gone through some of this. And that shift has uh, gone from that to essentially digitization of all of that. Now we have automation. Sin7 led the way for our customers to digitize a lot of that. So you don't need those paper pads anymore. The inventory cycle count happens uh, with the mobile app and all of the transactions are tracked automatically for you. That's great. What we see uh, the commerce world moving, we see the transformation happening next in the next phase 
is around the shift from digital commerce to intelligent commerce. So why intelligent commerce? We fundamentally believe that it's one thing to have the data. You ever heard the notion of system of records with ERP and big complex applications? We believe in the fact that that data needs to be converted into actionable insights. So you as a business owner, VP of operations, supervisor of your warehouse uh, um, facility, you got to have the insights that you need to run your business better. How do we take all of this data and turn them into what we call actionable insights? If we do that, you get enhanced experience. We want to make sure the application is not built for everybody, it's built for you. Having role-based behaviors and role-based um, uh, screens and dashboards are super important for us. That's what we're investing in this next phase. So our product vision for you in the space is a personalized platform, which is the SIN7 platform with actionable insights that I talked about earlier, smart automation. We have automation today. We are introducing some smart capabilities in there where you can set up threshold. You can essentially look at how we used to do certain transactions in the past. So things can get done while you are away, right? So you don't have to become a bottleneck for some key decisions that needs to be made to process a particular order or fulfill, uh, you know, or do a replenishment uh, of inventory or engaging with a particular supplier. And the last piece is the seamless integrations. As I talked about earlier, SIN7 does not believe in be all end all. We think we are a hub that provides core inventory capability, but with seamless integration, uh, a real-time synchronization happening across those multiple uh, capabilities of applications that you depend on every single day, from marketplaces to accounting systems, to shipping, to business tools, EDI and 3PL and so on. For today in this event, we're gonna focus on one of our two products, which is SIN7 Core. So to do that, I'm gonna bring my colleagues, Alexandra and Sierra. Alexandra, Sierra, take it away. Okay, here we are in SIN7 Core and I'm looking at my overview dashboard. Now you can actually customize a couple of things with the appearance for your dashboard. So maybe you wanna change this button from purple to teal, which is my favorite color, or maybe it's blue or whichever color you actually want. Uh, and you can change the navigation from horizontal to vertical. So you've got your icons that you can click on here. And once you click on the icons, more menu options will appear, such as a new production order or searching your list of production orders. However, I personally am more of a fan of the horizontal menu structure. So that's what you'll see in my demo today. So here we have our general dashboard and uh, you can see some high level KPIs, such as your sales order, your purchase order, et cetera, all from your overview dashboard. You have quick links to those features. We are going to be adding some additional dashboards here soon, such as a sales dashboard, which would be great for people like your sales reps or other members of your sales team who's interested in KPIs just for uh, their areas of expertise. We'll also be including additional dashboards like a procurement dashboard or manufacturing dashboard here soon. But for now, I'm actually going to hand the torch over to Alexandra, who's going to walk us through some of our point of sale um, uh, features. All right. Thank you, Sierra. Here we are in the point of sale um web page and in order to explore the new functionality that we recently introduced which is called customer facing screen we have to enable this functionality first we'll go to the main menu click on the setup tab and click on customer display setup we'll have to toggle on the button enable automatic opening and click on open customer display and here we have another screen um, ready for us to display the information. So we'll go back quickly to our point of sale and create a simple sale in pause. I'm going to add a couple of products to the cart. And then I will switch to another screen just to emphasize that all the products that 
I added to my previous card are displayed here on the second screen with all the product details, with all the product images, prices, total, etc. Oh, wow, Alexandra, that is so neat. Um, but what if we have an order that has uh, come in through, say, the phone or an email? Um, let's actually walk through what that sales order would look like in Sin7 Core. So I'm going to start by creating a simple sales order. And I'm going to wait for my customer to give me a call. Hello. Hello. Hi, Sierra, how are you? I'm well, Alexandra, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I would like to place an order, please. Oh, fantastic. And you're with ABC Furniture, right? That's correct. Fantastic. All right, and what can I help you with? I would like to order a customizable sofa. Oh, fantastic, we can do that. We do make to order uh, products all the time. So you said that you were interested in a customizable sofa, is that correct? That's correct. Awesome. We can do that for you. Now, we do have some that we already have in stock, but because I know you from our previous conversations, I'm pretty sure you would like to customize it yourself. So let's dive into uh, creating some new options uh, for you. So we do have some of these default options, but I want to go through each of these with you. There are different types of wood that we can use for the feet of the couch. There's maple, cherry, and walnut. Walnut, please. Fantastic. And then there's uh, fabric swatches that I know you and I have seen before in um, other uh, projects. Are you thinking about that dark gray color or do you have a green color in mind? What do you think? I would prefer a lighter color, maybe sand color. Ah, perfect. Yeah, that'll match the color of your cat. I remember that. Um, okay, two more questions for you is around the number of cushions. Do you want a two cushion situation or more of a, a bench cushion where it's one cushion across? Two cushions, please. Fantastic. And then uh, the embroidery element is something that is customizable for you. We can actually add embroidery to a pillow. Is there any kind of message you would like on that kind of pillow? Maybe let's uh, type... I love my cat. Absolutely. <laughs> and then last question for you is around the mattress. We do have a standard mattress option, but I would recommend the double mattress for longevity. Yeah, I agree. Give me the best you, you have. Perfect. All right, so we've got our sofa here. Um, all of the, the prices have changed as we've made our selections. So I'm gonna save this sofa for you on your sales order and it comes to 16.50, 15. Um, how does that sound? Is that ready to go? Yeah, sounds great. Let's process this. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna authorize and allocate the stock for this. And now it's going to be uh, ready to head off to the folks in the warehouse to start planning this, as well as um, the production order was created for the folks to work on it on the shop floor. All right, Alexandra, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, so as you see, there's a pop-up that will show that the production order was created. But if you miss this pop-up or if you need to uh, navigate back to the order, um, you can actually do this from the related orders tab. This related orders will show everything from if there's a production order, maybe you have to have a purchasing order or a transfer order related to the sales order. They're all captured and uh, shown on this, uh, this tab here. So first up, now that we know what the order is, I'm actually going to take a look at the schedule and see you know, how does this fall in line with everything? So now I'm taking a look at our production orders on a calendar where I'm planning out the week. I've noticed that there's actually too many orders happening in a particular week. So I'm gonna start editing and moving some of these around. For customer satisfaction, I may actually want to move Alexandra's order to even sooner so that we can get it delivered to her and blow those expectations out of the water, right? So we're going to work on it a little bit sooner 
this is going to update all of our planning and scheduling. And then I'm actually going to go back to the order and release it so that it can be worked on on the shop floor. So I have my bill of materials showing all the different components, all the different resources, as well as the machines that we need. And I'm gonna release it so that the folks on the shop floor can go ahead and get started. Okay, so you can use this view of the production order on the shop floor. I can actually start by creating the production run for our order. In this run, I'm only going to create one couch. And once it's created, I can see all of the different options, all of the different operations, all the steps for this couch. So processing the lumber, I can see which component we selected, the upholstery, the sewing, and all of these are happening one after the other. However, I don't want to use my laptop to actually work on these different operations, so I'll hand it over to Alexandra. Okay, great. Thanks, Sierra. Now, as a carpenter uh, working in the shop floor and uh, having access to Syncevan Core MES application, I can quickly access this and complete all the uh, operations from the shop floor itself on my mobile. And as we can see on the screen, I have all my operations listed in a consecutive order, so there is no way you can miss them. I'll start with the first one, processing the lumber. Quickly accessing the operation, click start, and proceed with the normal uh, process, picking the components. Additionally, you can um, add or remove resources, you can add notes. You can consume the existing files coming from the original BOM, or you can add additional files, and you can have a quick glance at the original BOM to see what operation you are performing and what's the expected time for this. Going back and completing the operation quickly. And I will quickly do the same thing for the second step. And now moving on to the third and last step. Which is sewing and we will start. And in case I want to suspend any operation because um, of obvious different reasons like fireproofing or machine needs cleaning, I can do so. This will help the operation to um, stop so that there is no actual time being calculated. And then I'll resume back when I'm ready. And once the operation is complete, I'll click on complete. Now we have reached the final step where we have our finished product and our sofa has a batch number. And here I can either manually input the batch or serial number, or I can ask the system to generate this um, batch or serial number for me, making sure that the quantity is correct. I can additionally um, type in any wastage if it's applicable. In my case, it's not applicable for the sofa and click on finish. After we hit complete, the sofa is uh, produced, the operation is complete, the production run is also complete, and uh, the cost calculations are displaying properly, and the sofa can be found in the availability page. Now it can be picked, packed, and shipped from the WMS application or from the back end. Back to you, Sierra. All right, thanks so much, Alexandra. Really glad that you guys were able to pull that couch together, get it ready so fast and ready for the next step, which like you said, is to pick, pack and ship our couch to our customer. From that sales order, which is what we fulfilled for, um, for Alexandra by baking that couch, we are going to start with the pick process. We can actually select to auto pick the couch for her. 
authorize that. And then using either the icons or the buttons to go to the next step, which is to pack. We can pull that over from the pick list, authorize, and move forward to the shipping. We can copy from the pack. Ooh, we have free shipping. Love that. And we're moving forward to the invoice. Now that we have shipped it to Alexandra, we are just going to send the invoice to her. And all of my changes have been made successfully. However, I have a feeling I'm gonna get a call from Alexandra here soon. Hello, Sierra again. Hey, Alexandra, how do you like your new couch? Well, it's looking great, but unfortunately it doesn't fit my, with my actual design of the living room. So unfortunately I would like to return it. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that, but we can create a credit note for you so that um, you can use that credit uh, in the future. Does that work for yep. you? Absolutely, that's great. Probably I'll use this amount to customize another sofa. Perfect, then we will go ahead and authorize that. And uh, once we get your couch back, we'll restock it and we'll move forward. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. So from here, we're going to receive that couch back into stock and we're actually going to be able to do what's called restock. Uh, this is something that can be done from this view here uh, using the laptop, but I think Alexandra has another way of doing this on the shop floor. So I'll hand it back to her. Amazing. Thank you, Sierra. Uh, you are absolutely right. We can restock this sofa with the help of WMS application. And um, as you can see on the screen, I'm yet to log in in WMS. And before I do that, I just wanted to emphasize that we have recently de uh, delivered a few exciting features for all our apps point of sale, WMS and MES. And these features are the ability to log in with Google, uh, also the ability to sign in with face ID and fingerprint. So let's take a quick look how we can do that with Google. Amazing. Now we are choosing the correct account that we want to log in. And after that, we will choose the correct shop floor or location where we are planning to receive our sofa. Great. So we have the restock functionality here. Double clicking on it will allow us to fill in the sale order number. And then we open the sale order and we scan the sofa and especially the batch number so that the system can identify it quickly, making sure that the quantity is correct and hit on finish button. That's it, it's fully restocked. Click on save and the item is successfully restocked. The same data will immediately display in the back end. Back to you, Sierra. Fantastic, thank you, Alexandra. And I can see when I look on my sales order that it has successfully been restocked in our system. However, it's a real shame that this is a beautiful sofa just sitting in our warehouse. I wish we could actually sell it someplace in a marketplace or an e-commerce site. Do you have any ideas, Alexandra? Well, we actually can. Um, list the same product that we restocked uh, on any of the e-commerce channels like Shopify, Amazon, or Walmart. And in our case, we'll go ahead and list it on Walmart and talk a little bit about the Walmart integration. Before I briefly um, jump into showcasing the main functionalities of the Walmart, I would like to emphasize that SYN7 Core has been recently approved by Walmart as an official solution provider, which means that the integration is of uh, high quality and provides the um, best integration for our customers. Okay, here we are in the Walmart setup 
page from the back end. In the setup tab, we can configure how we want the Walmart and C7 core connection to work. We can customize how the um, sale orders are being processed or loaded. And we can also customize the account and cash settings. We can link the tax rules. And of course, in the catalog tab, the main thing is we can load the products from Walmart and also list the products from Sin7 Core to Walmart. Additionally, we can open um, a specific product link or unlink and uh, make sure that we customize our integration at the product level by either um, disabling or enabling the stock level, sync stock level. All right. And uh, also in the log tab, we're able to see the list of all the sale orders that uh, has have been processed and the hyperlink will allow you the quick ability to open the sale order to view all the details. It's important to note that we are investing a lot of time in uh, enhancing our existing integrations uh, like um, Shopify, um, Walmart, uh, Amazon, etc. And we have been working um, with our valued customer, Patrick, who has helped us tremendously uh, to make the Walmart uh, integration a success. And here we have a um, testimonial from him. Um, we greatly appreciate that, Patrick. Um, at the same time, we have improved our QuickBooks integration and we have added recently two more new features. The first one is the ability to sync gift card payments correctly between the two applications. And the second one is the credit card payments uh, ability to correctly uh, reflect in QuickBooks Online. And that concludes today's um, demonstration. Um, well, stay tuned for new features uh, in Sin7 Core, and we are looking forward to hearing from Ajoy on um, other great functionalities that are yet to be released in Sin7 Core. Thank you. Awesome. That was fantastic demo from Sierra and Alexandra. What you uh, saw is just a a sliver of new capabilities that we have brought into the market in the last quarter with uh, with Core. We've just scratched the surface. There is a lot more in terms of functionality and new capabilities. And like I said earlier, that's all based on uh, strong feedback from our customers and partners, which we rely heavily on to shape the product and the capability uh, that we put out every single release into the market. Talking about customer feedback, I'm honored that I'm joined by two customers uh, of Sin7 Core. I would, it's my pleasure to introduce them to you all uh, today. Uh, joining me from uh, Bristol, UK is Flo from Marshfield Farms. Hi, Flo. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and also joining me, actually kind of like my neighbor, I'm calling in from Seattle and Dylan is also in Seattle. Uh, Dylan from Seattle Pottery Supply. Welcome, Dylan. Hi, thank you very much. Awesome. Well, thank you both uh, for taking the time, not only today, but uh, you know, in the past, uh, providing us and uh, my team uh, feedback on product features, uh, what's great, what's some new things that we need to be thinking about. Like I said, that's all super helpful for us. So for the call today, and uh, you know, given we have customers, future customers and partners in attending this uh, launch event, let's kick off with a quick introduction about yourself. So maybe Flo, you can start us off. Tell us a bit about you and the company. Uh, so my name is Flora Hawking um, and I work in my family business, which makes ice cream. Um, we have over 250 cows on site. Uh, we milk them every day and we have done for the last 60 years. Um, and then we use about 60% of that milk to make our ice cream. Um, we make to stock um, and we make over 30 products, um, which includes ice cream for dogs, because if you treat your family, you treat everyone in the family and not just your children and your husband or wife, it's it's the dog too. Um, so yeah. That's, that's awesome. Good. That's awesome. Unbelievable. 
Uh, and uh, uh, Flo, do you have a, a retail store or do you primarily sell to wholesalers? How does that work? So it's primarily to wholesalers. Um, it's a business to business environment. Um, and yeah, we have about uh, 3000 stockists, um, but not that many people that we deliver directly to. OK, awesome. All right. Same question over to you, Dylan. Oh, thank you very much. I'm uh, actually new to the pottery world. Um, we've been using core for about four years and um, our business is heavily about manufacturing, although we do have a retail store where you can come and buy the clay we make, the glaze we make, the glaze other people make, any other tool you could possibly need for pottery and kilns that we make in-house. Uh, I think getting into this, uh, while I had experience in other businesses, I uh, appreciated inventory at an academic level and not in a 10,000 skew uh, in the building level. And uh, DEER has really helped bring structure and organization to a business that was 100% on paper when we started with DEER on day one. Oh, that's awesome. Say core now. We started when it was DEER. That's right. That's right. Since I'm core, and that's totally fine, Dylan. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, fair point, like inventory on, on pay, paper and academics is very different in, in, uh, in real world. Um, awesome. Well, thank you again. And uh, let's start with the first question, which is uh, just a brief uh, uh, understanding of uh, the benefits that you have seen um, using a product like Sin7 Core. How has it impacted your organization, your day-to-day -day business processes? Um, anything you can shed some light on for our audience? Maybe Flo, we'll start with you. I'll, I'll kick off. <laughs> um, we were very similar to Dylan in that we had uh, legacy bits of software that managed our inventory. Um, and we found that uh, the them talking to each other was an absolute nightmare. Um, we had lots of people rekeying information and we didn't actually know what was real or what was fake. Um, so when we moved into SIN 7 Core, we... Um, the level of detail that we can see totally across all functions of the business is really amazing. And the stability of the product is ultimately what we really love about it. It, it works and we understand why, and we can understand why it, it's telling us what it is. Um, and that's just been game changing for us. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Dylan? Uh, well, we were really fortunate to get to choose the stack, uh, although it was on a tight timeline. Uh, but Core has always been the core of our stack uh, with Shopify to the side for our website. Um, of course, you know, the business we started with didn't even have a website. So again, we got to build it from the ground up uh, and it was fun to not have to reintegrate. Um, so I chose Core because of all of the strong integrations as well as a, a strong API so that if there wasn't an integration and we needed, had no other choice, we could sure wire it up ourselves. Awesome. Now that extensibility is, uh, is uh, you know, appreciated by a lot of our customers. The ability to connect to other systems um, in a leveraging the API to have that seamless uh, you know, data entry so you don't have to uh, rekey or have a manual, uh, you know, import export. Awesome. So let's uh, let's switch gears and talk about uh, you know features or functionality that you would like to see improved or added um, in Sin Seven Core. Maybe we'll start with Dylan on this one. Oh sure. Well, um, <laughs> you know, integration is so complex. I can just use the same example again. You've got a tough job because you're having to build a toolbox to fit almost any situation, anywhere, anytime. Um, but uh, since I use Shopify as an example, um, perhaps being able to link from what ends up being a core sales order that imported from Shopify, having a link that could just take us straight back into Shopify on the page to verify things like, did the payment go through? Um, whereas payments don't sync down until the invoice document is authorized in core. And uh, likewise, if we have to do a refund, if we could initiate the refund through Deer instead of having to go to Shopify, um, that would be easier. But having a link would at least make doing a manual refund one step easier. Got it. Now, two, two great feedback and uh, uh, you know something that we've got in the backlog, and I'm sure team is going to spend some time talking to you about the specifics as well. 
I'm Hello? sure you guys have a lot of ideas. Of, oh yeah, uh, that's the that's the fun part of this, right? It's it's ideas that uh, you know we hear from a lot of customers and partners, but then also putting them together in a nice canvas, so it's all feeling like the right things to focus on and the right time frame, right? Not all ideas are you know created equally. How do we prioritize you know based on customer impact need? And that's why conversations like this. I mean, today it's just a quick uh, chat, but we do this on an ongoing basis. I've had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with both of you. And and love the energy and passion, and that's that's what's super exciting about what we can uh, do in, going forward in the future from a product roadmap perspective. So anyway, over to you, Flo. I know we've spent a lot of time together on this topic, so uh, I'm sure you got a bunch of ideas top of mind. Um, so for us, uh, one of the things that could be improved that we currently have, um, going back to kind of talking about the reporting and um, how the MRP function works. Um, would be the the how the scheduler and when we manufacture um, using the required by date and the release date to work together. So then if we have supply orders or production orders that move around because we make things, supply orders don't come in on time, um, the sun comes out and everyone wants salted caramel ice cream and they don't want vanilla ice cream, um, we move that pan around it, like the wind um, or like the sun, some might say. Um, <laughs> So having a system that can keep up with us, um, it would be would be super for us. And that is the required by date and the release date within the scheduler calendar view is would be my would my you know, one thing to change or improve yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, that sounds sounds super familiar, Flo. And uh, as you saw in Sierra's demo earlier today, we have introduced a couple of different views. One of them is the um, the scheduler view. And, uh, you know, I think great idea and getting that uh, start date, end date uh, aligned from a delivery standpoint. So two super good examples, one around the Shopify piece, Dylan, and then one on the uh, the overall um, manufacturing planning. So love it. Uh, any other closing thoughts before we wrap up here, uh, this conversation? Well, thanks, for, thanks for asking for the feedback, Ajoy. It's really, really uh, great. I can say that starting as a dear customer, uh, they never ask for feedback, and since Seven has asked for our feedback many times in a in a very short period, it's uh, really a pleasure to see some of our feedback even implemented in the the product already, and uh, just uh, enjoy getting to participate. Love it, love it. Appreciate that, Dylan. Means a lot. Flo, I can only echo those those comments. Um, I yeah, we really love. Um, since seven core it's uh, totally changed how our business works and um, the improvements and the passion that you're putting into changing them um, and listening to what your customers want is um is really inspiring so thank you awesome well uh, that's uh, really really nice of uh, both of you to say that and uh, we appreciate the collaboration as well uh, we'll keep this conversation going obviously today just wanted to get the you know essence of how we think about our customer engagement to the broader audience and I appreciate you taking the time and joining us today Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you too. You. Well, let's thank uh, Flo and Dylan one more time for, for joining us in this event and sharing their insights and feedback. Uh, we really appreciate our customers uh, offering and pr pr basically being the voice of our customer in a larger customer base. And those feedbacks are super important in shaping the roadmap and the vision for the product. So we really appreciate Flo and Dylan's time today. All right, here we are in the last uh, last mile, I should say, with this event. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, all those demos that Sierra and Alexandra did. But before we wrap up, I thought I'll close by giving you a quick sneak peek into uh, what we are working on in Q3 of 2023 uh, for SYN7 Core. There are basically three themes that I wanna talk about here. First is the best in class integrations. As I said earlier, you and your company depend on solutions that are uh, like marketplaces and accounting, et cetera, uh, to run your business and grow your business every single day. Our commitment to you is to offer the best possible integrations. We continue to get customer feedback and we continue to improve it every single day and every single release. So for example, with the QuickBooks Online, one of the key things that we are working on is the ability to do synchronizations at the consolidated level something that many of you have asked for, and we're excited to be uh, offering that sometime this quarter. Second, 
is how do we make code as an application easier to learn and use? One of the key strengths of code as a product is the ability to onboard faster. Unlike complex ERP applications and inventory applications, with Core, our customers can get online and live in a matter of days. And we want to continue building on that strength. One of, the, one of the things that we're working on, which I'm personally excited about, is role-based dashboard. We want to make the application personalized for you. Again, going back to the product vision of a personalized platform. So the first dashboard that we are introducing in this quarter is a sales dashboard. So if you are looking after the sales aspect of your business, you would have all the KPIs that you would need. So every single day as you start the business, that's the dashboard you're going to look into and look at trends and focus on areas where you may have to spend some time and provide that attention that's needed to correct a particular situation. It could be back order, it could be a shipping delay, it could be a supplier issue, whatever the case may be. Uh, or increased volume of orders coming in, and that might uh, impact your forecast. We're going to put that into the dashboard so you have that accessible, and you can run your business, start your business by looking at the dashboard. More dashboards are coming in the future. So we're going to invest in many areas like that, improving the user experience and UI uh, in that particular uh, theme. And the last theme is about adding depth to our product features. We have partner council and customer council providing us feedback that constantly improves our product. And we want to continue to add depth that are important for you, whether it's improving our MRP application or adding new workflows within the dropship scenario or uh, adding capabilities into our reporting, for instance. The second aspect of that is innovation. We got to continue to innovate. Technology is moving at a rapid pace. This is a phenomenal time to live as a technologist building applications like Sin7. And we want to leverage and take advantage of those technologies to solve critical business problems. So our application offers you a tool set that makes you do your job better tomorrow than today. And that's the promise that we want to work, again, work towards. Innovation, talking about innovation, one of the key areas where we have seen we are seeing a lot of excitement and a lot of progress around machine learning and artificial intelligence. I am sure all of you have heard about ChatGPT. It's a uh, you know there's been a huge huge coverage around it, lots of air cover. But in general, large language models or generative AI is getting a lot of attention. There's a bit of hype that is true with any technology when it comes out. People get super excited. Uh, myself included, uh, but there is some real practical applications that tech, you know capabilities like ChatGPT can help. So we got together as a, as a team and also talked to some partners and customers and say, and and asked ourselves how can ChatGPT help us. And I think there are many different areas that uh, uh, generative AI like ChatGPT can help within the context of inventory and order management. I wanted to show you one such example. It's not a finished product, it's work in progress, um, something that we are evaluating right now, but this is real code. We have built this integration with ChatGPT that I wanted to show you. Now let's take a look at how a ChatGPT can help us. So I'm here in the um, ChatGPT app. I'm gonna put a prompt in here. The first prompt I'm gonna try is said, hey, can you tell me what the demand for our product will be this holiday season? Let's see what it does. Well, obviously the AA model cannot predict that. And sometimes uh, I'm sure you all as business owners find it difficult to uh, exactly predict what the future holds from an holiday demand perspective. Um, even though something like uh, generative AI may not be able to help, um, we are, as I said earlier, we are working on some machine learning um, capabilities. And one of them is around forecasting where we think um, it could help you as a, as a business owner uh, try to do better forecasting uh, both on the supply and demand side and so on. So can't wait to share more on that in the in the coming um, coming months. Um, if you have specific feedback or thoughts on this and, and you are interested in learning more about what we are working on, uh, please do reach out to us. Uh, what else uh, can uh, ChatGPT help us? Maybe something like, can you fix all EDI errors? Okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe one day, not right now. 
Um, but let's, in all seriousness though, let's switch gears and take a look at Sin7 Core. And I'll show you one specific use case we have actually um, adopted with the uh, generative AI like ChatGPT. So I'm right now on the product page within Sin7. This is the product page we, we all know and love. I'm gonna open up this watch um, item. Um, it shows all the different attributes of the watch. Uh, one of the use cases we discussed with our customers and partners is that around description. Um, some of our customers have a, a marketing agency or a marketing professional helping. Um, others just use the description that could, they get from the supplier or the manufacturer, uh, but really felt there's a need for us to leverage a technology like ChatGPT to help our customers uh, create better descriptions. So how would that look like? So I can go ahead and type a few bullets of what I think this watch is. So I, I'm gonna pick up some of the stuff that I typed up earlier um, as I was uh, rehearsing for this demo. And uh, what is this product? So we are using ChatGPT. Uh, it's built into Sin7 right now. We are actually using the version that's offered by Microsoft Azure with, as part of their Azure OpenAI. Um, it's better packaged and bundled uh, and suitable for uh, business applications like, like Sin7 to use. So now I've got this bullet uh, captured, right? It's an elegant watch, it's a metal strap, durable, et cetera. But I want a more compelling description. So what I can do is I can say generate with AI. So it captures that whole description here. And when I hit the generate button, now you're gonna see this magic happen. There you go. So it took those four or five bullets and then created this really, really um, uh, fun uh, description introducing the watch, exquisitely designed timepiece with a sleek and durable metal strap, crafted with utmost elegance. I mean, you get the idea. I wanna buy the watch now reading that description. So anyway, what you can do now is you can apply this and it just brings it back into the short description. You can do the same thing for the long description. Again, just one example of how something like ChatGPT can help with the use case within the context of Sin7. Um, this one is almost ready. We are getting ready to release this into production. Um, for those customers on the call today and joining this event, uh, if you're interested in uh, participating and being an early adopter of this capability, uh, please do reach out to us. We will put the contact information as part of the, the, um, the chat and also follow up to this uh, event as well. Uh, we would love to get many of customers uh, early adopting this and using this in the real world scenario and give us feedback. Okay. So with that, I want to close uh, today's uh, uh, event by again thanking you all for your time and uh, remind you about the new vision. At Sin7, our commitment extend uh, to discover new ways uh, we can enhance the value of your inventory, warehouse, and manufacturing systems. We're determined to provide you with cutting edge tools and solutions that have traditionally been complex, expensive, and only accessible to large corporations. Companies that go through you know, six month, a year, two years implementation cycle, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. What we are doing with Sin7 is democratizing a lot of that capability, bringing it down so all of you as our customers can you know, get this uh, solution, uh, but also get the value of it by going onboarding and going live uh, in matter of days, if not weeks. We are excited about what's the future ahead uh, especially with the technology landscape and all the new innovations happening. Uh, and we are excited about the uh, collaboration that we have with our customers and partners. By working closely with uh, you all, we will continue to tailor the solution to meet the specific needs uh, by offering key capabilities in the product, while also continuing to improve the overall service that we offer to our customers. With that promise, I want to thank you all again for joining us today and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.